Hello and welcome to mini lecture six. This one on sustainability and the 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, we also include the circular economy in this uh, mini lecture. Uh, and of course, this is entirely relevant to your group work and uh, your group assignment. So do spend some time uh, watching this and making some notes as you go through. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the concept of sustainability uh, and sustainability with respect to management, picking up the uh, triple bottom line, the circular economy and the development goals. So what is sustainability to you? Pause the video post the first word that comes into your mind on the Course Cafe discussion board. Okay, thank you for doing that. Thinking about sustainability. Something is sustainable if it lasts over a long period of time. It can be maintained at a certain quality and level and rate and has little external impact. So that's perhaps how we could think about sustainability. In, uh, in 1987, there was uh, a report about our common future. Development that meets of the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to make their own needs. So the idea of working to sustaining the human existence has been around for quite a while. So we have got the needs of the present, which are jobs, income, security, food, clean water, equality, living space, health, economic needs, ecological needs, and social needs. Development because not currently met. So all of those needs are not currently met. So there is a desire uh, to, to meet more development. So those things increase. The needs of future generations, very similar, uh, exactly the same. So sustainable development has a future as well as a present need. So the UN agenda in 2030 provided a blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet now and into the future. And the UN developed 17 sustainable development goals, which aim to reduce inequality, tackle climate change and poverty. So as part of the exercise, uh, go and have a look at the United Nations uh, website and explore the goals that interest you in a little bit more detail. Here they are. Poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitization, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure. There's that word innovation again. Reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice and strong institutions, partnership for the goals. So 17 goals which are universal uh, to uh, life on this planet and uh, are aimed at trying to change and innovate uh, for a sustainable future for everyone.
So if we think about sustainability, it has an ecology, an economy, and a society pillar. Uh, so that you, you need to get those three things working in alignment now in, and into the future to create a sustainable future. If you cast your mind back to the uh, business model canvas, where we were talking about not only the, the basic model canvas, but the uh, three levels of business model canvas. And you can see that they pick up the sustainability. And this framework helps think about the sustainability, the social layer, the environmental layer, and the economic layer. So you've got this horizontal coherence we're trying to achieve across the economic layer, the, 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 the things we're doing on value propositions uh, between customer and provider, and then this vertical coherence between the impacts on, on sustainability. So some key terminology associated with uh, sustainability. One you will have heard, of course, of carbon footprint. Uh, it's the emission of greenhouse gases. Uh, it's derived from CO2, which is principally from the burning of fossil fuels, but also from the production and farming uh, and other sources. So greenhouse gas, global warming, uh, and you can see here some of the, uh, the potential uh, greenhouse gases that, that cause some of the issues associated with the world's atmosphere. Then there's a water footprint. So green water comes from soil and evaporated and incorporated into plants. There's blue water that's taken from the surface and evaporated and there's grey water. Uh, and so you've got the, the water terminology as well. So water isn't just water. Uh, it's related to its source, as how it's used, how it's reprocessed, how it comes from the Earth's environmental cycle. So water uh, is not just water. We then have the carrying capacity of the world. And this, this is perhaps something that we always don't think about but currently the world is using about 160 percent of the world's earth's carrying capacity so a lot has been written about the resources uh, seven billion humans are consuming of the world which are many of which are not recyclable so in other words that once they're gone they're gone so we're exceeding the, capacity, the carrying capacity of the world and making permanent changes to the environment uh, and essentially de de decreasing resource quality. And therefore the world's carrying capacity of people and uh, animals and trees and everything else is being reduced. And we think about management uh, and sustainability in management. Across management, there are many, many different approaches. There's corporate social responsibility, and that's internal and external. So the well-being of the supply chain, the well-being of human resources. So there's a corporate social responsibility often discussed in management. And then there's an environmental management uh, uh, technique as well, which is about life cycle analysis, about green marketing, green production, supply chain management. So management uh, is often involved in uh, thinking and making decisions uh, about sustainability, perhaps using innovation perhaps using uh, green marketing, perhaps thinking about uh, a circular economy. And so there are some holistic management techniques. Total cost accounting is not just about the 
value in exchange and the money. It is about the uh, the total cost. And we'll talk more in later in this lecture about the triple bottom line. And of course, management isn't just about uh, economic companies and for profit companies. Management includes government and public and private sector organizations and charities and third sectors. So we have sustainability in organizations as a whole, not just in uh, commercial and for-profit organizations. So corporate social responsibility has a series of layers as well. The economic responsibilities, the legal responsibilities, the ethical responsibilities, and the philanthropical responsibilities. And uh, corporate social responsibility uh, applies to, to most organizations and you could argue to individuals as well. So you, we've all got this responsibility to protect and sustain the world and its economy and its ecological system and its social system. So co corporate social responsibility is moving from shareholder to stakeholder. And so from profit to impact to value. To, uh, to value propositions. And corporate means a body of individuals, shareholders, we all know people who invest in organizations, can be employees, can be customers, can be communities, can be suppliers, uh, and shareholders can be all of those things. Uh, so uh, we've got stakeholders also. And stakeholders can be not necessarily have an economic relationship with uh, a corporate organization. So shareholders often get a financial benefit. Stakeholders may get a future sustainability benefit. So we need to understand a product's impact on sustainability. So management decision making about production, purchasing, consumption, and thinking about the learning and how to improve those decisions uh, and those sources and use of resources, and then to think about communications around sustainability, perhaps labels, uh, perhaps energy consumption in producing products, perhaps materials consumption. So to understand a service or a product's impact on the environment and on those sustainability goals. So it requires comparable measures, perhaps like carbon or carbon capture. Its comparison is only really possible when you think about the total life cycle of the product. So if you take a bike or a vehicle um, or a, a coffee cup, you consider the whole life cycle from the use of energy to its disposal and waste it creates. So you create this life cycle assessment uh, of a product or service, looking at the raw material and acquisition, the energy, the manufacturing, uh, the usage, the end of life treatment, the recycling and disposal. So we're trying to make decisions around sustainability that avoid suboptimal decision making. And traditionally, the, environment, the environmental impact layer was not considered. Um, and the UN sustainability goals, uh, some of those require us to think about the environmental impact. So a terminology has started to come up around a circular economy. So the economy, this, this economy of production and uh, disposal, um, which was the linear, linear economy, 
single product life cycle, take, make, dispose. And so the circular economy is trying to uh, re re try to re reinvigorate and reframe from a linear economy to a circular economy that doesn't take, make and dispose. So we have this definition from Kircher, an economic system in which the concept of the final finite product life cycle is replaced by the concept of four R's, reducing, reusing, recycling and recovering of materials used in the process of production, distribution and consumption. So we have a definition of the circular economy and there are often R's. You will find lots of R's uh, to def define it, ranging from three to nine, but the most common uh, four are recover, recycle, reuse and reduce. And we'll look at a couple of those as we go through this lecture. So recycling and recovering is around uh, perhaps the most mentioned uh, conversations around the circular economy. So converting waste into reusing, re reusable material, breaking down products, shredding, melting, palletizing, uh, reducing the need for energy and disposal. So one area of the circular economy, recycling and recovering. Then there is reuse, creating products that last for a long time, uh, that can be reused or can be remanufactured. Upcycling. Uh, some of you will have seen on Park Street some of the upcycling shops for clothing. And this is about reuse uh, rather than manufacturing again. So that reduces the need for new products and therefore reduces the need for energy and materials and resources for production. So this is reuse and remanufacture. Reduce uh, is another area in the circular economy. So you reduce people's ownership. You produce products as services. We've talked quite substantially in this unit about services and the co-creation of value and that services are the dominant method of exchange in an economy. And therefore, we create a sharing economy that has higher utilization, higher resource efficiency. So you get more use for a particular product or service uh, because it's shared. And so instead of everybody having their own bicycle, there are shared service, shared bicycles who get much more use uh, on a daily basis or the scooters that, that uh, you see in Europe. So much higher utilization than everybody having a single one of their own. So that's the circular economy. Have a look at this very short video around uh, that applied to food waste uh, and uh, how there is a, if just thinking in this way, uh, you can reduce the carbon footprint and reduce waste and disposal. So the circular economy. And then we can think about closed loop supply chains. Th this, this thinks about instead of a, a supply chain that just makes and produces and send it to someone and that's the end of it. This is a supply chain that completes the circle. Whilst not uh, specifically a closed loop supply chain, uh, this week the Royal Mail have agreed to pick up products and uh, mail from people's homes. So instead of a one-way supply chain, mail to, to individuals and to homes, actually they may well collect mail that may prevent, help you uh, reduce your carbon footprint by not driving or going to a, a, a post office uh, to have a parcel logged and, and sent. So uh, again, uh, there's a market uh, pressure here uh, from competitors who, who are obviously offer that service. So products, closed loop supply chains close the loop and uh, often take back their products to be 
uh, repaired, recycled, resold or reused. Um, and uh, w closed loop supply chains are really critical to thinking about sustainability and indeed services. So here's a, a case example, uh, two components, packaging and content. Uh, it could be milk, could be water, uh, could be a a any material. So the packaging remains after consumption. So you reduce the amount of packaging, you reduce plastic waste, you have a, a closed loop where there is, uh, if you like, a reprocessing of the packaging material is through a closed, closed loop. Um, so here, there's another example. So the circular economy aims to reduce waste, increase resource productivity, mitigate resource security and scarcity of resources, reduce environmental impact of production and produce competitive advantage main drawback is it's often only focused on the environmental layer and not on the social or ecological layers um, or indeed the individual shareholder stakeholder sorry stakeholder values that that may be relevant in, in to an individual so sustainability and management creates a win-win situation often improves the brand reputation improves resource efficiency, perhaps, and can motivate uh, employees more. And the CSR and environmental management system are typically sub, but are typically subordinate to economic management. That's a really important point. So when we get into organisations, we're we're often faced with priorities and prioritizations, and it's quite likely that the economic impact of a management decision will be prioritized over uh, a sustainability or an environmental one. And obviously the sustainability goals are trying to encourage organizations to reprioritize uh, their decisions. So we're trying to create win-win scenarios um, but are often focused too narrow and we have this problem of greenwashing so organizations say we're sustainable they start to produce marketing material which says they're using this sustainable source or that sustainable source so there is a danger of of greenwashing uh, have a look at that in further detail. There's lots of material written about greenwashing. Uh, it's essentially saying we're very sustainable as an organization. Keep buying our products and services. One way of, of handling greenwashing is to think about the triple bottom line. So to, to try to move the management emphasis from just the economic position to a more sustainable use of uh, other other factors uh, in measuring how an organization performs. So instead of being a profit bottom line, you've got a triple bottom line where conventional businesses follow uh, a maximizing profit logic, but actually there is a need to create a different bottom line uh, that is about the resources and sustainability and the environment. So John Elkington proposed uh, three bottom lines to measure an organization by financial, ecological, and social. And that all these have to be met in unison and uh, effectively uh, complement each other. So it requires balancing of the win-wins and there are some trade-offs. Let's look at each one. Financial bottom line, I think most of you know all about that. Uh, so achieving economic prosperity, uh, profit, loss, costs, margins, uh, objective, rational, um, but it can be ambiguous because how you account and for standards. Ecological, this is about the uh, effectively the sustaining operations, the resources, the quality, the habitable planet, 
uh, the carbon footprint. So these are some of the measures you might put on the ecological bottom line for an organization. And then the social bottom line, uh, social capital uh, includes health, skills, education, creating wealth for society, um, lowering social friction, uh, dealing with disadvantaged uh, social communities, uh, improving the life of disadvantaged people in underdeveloped countries. So a lot of social, a lot of social in, in the social bottom line. So you have this triple, triple bottom line reporting system which aims to uh, actually show how an organization is fulfilling each dimension. Uh, and not uh, not trading off one dimension uh, to improve on a, 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 another one. So this is the sustainable uh, approach where you've got a triple line bottom measure for an organization. So that brings us nicely back to the sustainable development goals uh, and, uh, and how they start to uh, shape how organizations should be uh, effectively planning their services and products and their operations and their, their services and their innovations. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it went on for a little while. Uh, it's about 26 minutes, but it's entirely relevant to your group assignment uh, and is a very much an emerging research theme of this university. So please uh, do take note and do think about applying this to the company that your group is researching. Thank you for listening.